Here we are in our fourth module, Building Materials with Textures, Part 1. Now there are two parts to this because of the complexity of the textures. There's just a lot more to do than what we were doing previously in Module 3. We are going to be using textures that have been created both using Substance Designer and Photoshop. And then those textures were saved out in different PNG files or TIFF or Targa files. And so we're going to go over how to get those plugged in into the appropriate attributes of our material. So let's go ahead and jump into Maya and let's get started with our fire for our fireplace. All right, so let's go ahead and once again, we're going to be living in our hypershade. So let's get that opened up and clear out our workspace here. And once again, we want to choose the Arnold standard surface material. Go ahead and rename this one AI Fire. For the weight, we can go ahead and leave that at 0.8. That's fine. Or actually, let's go ahead and take this up to 1. That'll work for this case. Let's go ahead and get the color. We're going to go with a file. Let's open up our folder. And for this, it's located underneath the fireplace folder here. And we want to grab the base flames inside a TIFF file. Let's go ahead and open that up. Okay, and the specular weight, we're going to take that down to zero. We don't want any specularity on our flames. And then we want to come down to emission. And we want to take that same file that we just created, middle mouse click on it and drag it onto the color of our emission. And then we can take this all the way up to, let's go to so now it just looks like our flames are a lot more vibrant and alive. But we still have this black background here. So we need to get that cut out with an opacity map. And we can do that underneath the geometry tab here. So here we have the opacity. And we want to plug in a file for this. Grab that. And open up our folder here and choose the flames opacity here. Click on open. Now for this, since we're using a black and white image here, we want to go ahead and change our color space from sRGB to raw. And we can come down and make sure alpha is luminance. So now we can see that we do have our flames that have been cut out and they are emitting some light, but not a lot. So once again, we created that area light for our fireplace to actually cast light into our scene where we're using the emission just to give that glow effect to our flames here to make sure that they are bright and vibrant. So let's go ahead and grab our plane here in the fireplace. I'm gonna hit F to zoom in on this. And let's go ahead and right click, assign existing material, and we wanna grab that fire that we just created. And we can see that we need to rotate our UVs here. So let's go ahead and go into the polygons menu and open up our UV editor. And they've also made changes to the UV editor here. You just get everything scaled back down here. Opened up quite largely. There we go. So what we can do right now, the UVs are just in this rectangle shape. So it's the shape of our plane, but we can go ahead and go to modify and let's unitize that. So now our flames are all the way across our image there, but we need to get them rotated around. So let's go ahead and let's go into transform on the right here. We're gonna scroll down and we want to rotate this around. Okay, so let me go ahead and let's grab the UVs first. There we go. And now let's go ahead and get them rotated around. Do it once more here. There we go, now they're right side up. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And what I would like to do is go ahead and take our object here and we can move it up slightly, something like that. And I don't necessarily want, some of these flames are a little tall, so I'm actually going to squeeze this down just a little bit. Not a lot. All right, and then just make sure that's tucked down in there. Something like that will look just fine since this is a natural gas or just a gas fireplace here. Okay, 
So that'll work for the fire here. In the next clip, let's go ahead and, oh, one more thing that we need to do here on our geometry, let's go to the attributes and let's go underneath the Arnold and we need to make sure that opaque is unchecked. It is already, so let's make sure it's unchecked or else when we render it out, we won't see the transparency at all. So in the next clip, we'll go ahead and do our tile floor.